going to give an update on the user services platform itself, um, specifically version 1.3, but this is for anybody who has um, never really heard of USP before and what it is and what it can do. Very first thing, it's very important to set USP in the context of the evolution of managed, the managed user experiences, specifically device management. Back in 2004, obviously, you know, ISPs needed some way to do a bunch of remote provisioning that wasn't in, done by sending out a disk to the customer to set up the gateway and provision the, the right connection parameters and that sort of thing. Back then, uh, th that gave birth to TR69, which I'm sure many people know about. And then over time, TR69 was widely successful, you know, even if it was just covering some of those basic use cases, specifically like, you know, firmware management, stuff like that. And expanded to many more interfaces and many more devices. Enough that we had to redo the data model to make it a little bit more structured. So that used to be uh, TR98 or the Internet Gateway Device Data Model. But that has been deprecated for a very long time. And now we use what's known as the Device 2 Data Model or TR181. Um, and that really started to pick up steam when the cable and MSO community started to pick up tier 69 for use in specifically in Wi-Fi management, <clears throat> but a couple other things too. And since then we saw an explosion of new technologies and challenges for, for everyone involved in the industry. That's IOT more, you know, more nodes in the home of differing technologies, you know, not just Wi-Fi and a bunch of, you know, and, and things on the other side of the gateway, like set to boxes and, and. VoIP devices and, and things have continued to accelerate. And in 2015, we all got together and said, all right, it's time to think about what's next for tier 69. And that gave birth to USP, which version 1.0 was created in one in, in, in 2018. And since then we've gone through three revisions. The most recent was USP 1.3 released with TR one a one device 2.16. And there's a whole bunch of things that have been added to really, really enhance how it is that the, all of these things are done for operators, specifically things like big data analytics, customer self-care, adding value added applications to the gateway, managing the smart home, having a complete picture of managed Wi-Fi, and more. Oh, so what is the user services platform? We talk about it as a system of controllers and agents that enables the remote manipulation of software and hardware capabilities. And what does that mean? That means that it enables real user services. So things like managed Wi-Fi systems, either locally or in the cloud, uh, network AI and analytics, those customer self-care applications I was talking about, and I'll explain why that's possible with USP. And then this, the big thing that we're talking about recently is the app enabled services gateway uh, that allows third-party applications to be stall installed on a gateway, modularizing the different capabilities of the gateway. A fully interoperable smart home that can be onboarded by ISPs and managed and troubleshooted because let's be honest, they're the ones who get the calls in the end and a lot more. And it does that through a bunch of specific features that we added to USP. And the most important of those is probably the multi-controller, multi-agent architecture. So tier 69 was designed such that a single, you know, a single ACS manages, you know, hundreds of thousands of devices and all those devices just talk to that one ACS. And now we've broken things up in USP such that many controllers can control many different things about the device uh, and that even if it's done through different parties. There's secure end-to-end -end messaging that we went in through from the beginning. So if there's communication that's going over what would normally be an insecure environment, you can secure that channel over USP. We've added the ability to have commands and events a little bit more flexible and extensible. So they're all handled in the data model now rather than the protocol. So things can be added on a per use case basis. USP is not dependent on the cloud because of how that multi-controller architecture works and where controllers can reside. And we designed it to coexist with tier 69. So because we're using the same data model underneath, um, it can exist at the same time on the same device as tier 69. So tier 69 can handle you know, the older use cases while people transition to USP for other use cases. Uh, we improved on that proxy mechanism that we used to have in tier 69 so that things that don't support USP or are, you know, or the management of which wishes to be consolidated into a single agent can be done 
And we went out of our way to make sure that there is a rudimentary northbound REST API into, control, into the controller. So how does it work? So there's a USP agent and an agent exposes capabilities, which we call service elements that are defined in TR181 to one or more controllers. Um, and it can represent those capabilities directly, or it can represent the capabilities on other devices through the proxy mechanism. A server provider can, there's many different sort of use cases for controllers. One is obviously just like today's TR69 auto configuration server as part of a device management system. User can access an, an agent remotely by having a controller on a smartphone, either in the cloud or, you know, through a cloud controller system, which is very cool. And it can also be used to build an automated smart home uh, environment. So what makes up the user services platform? It's made of several different um, components. The first is TR369 itself, You're the user services platform which defines sort of the protocol and how everything works and how everything's secured. And I'll explain later what exactly is covered in TR369. And that's in partnership with TR181 issue, uh, issue two or the device two data model. And that defines all the KPIs and controls and commands and parameters and objects and things that can be manipulated by a USB controller. It's backed up by a certification program. That's the BBF.369 certification program, which is a self-certification program, which means people can run the testing on an approved tool by themselves and then submit their results to an approved lab for certification. And the test plan is defined in TP469. And lastly, we do have an official open source agent that is a reference implementation if people want to use it. And that's OB USP agent, and that's managed by the broadband forum. And all of these things can be found at usp.technology. And we have this down here that is complemented by Wi-Fi data element certification. And that is because specifically for the Wi-Fi management use case, we've worked very closely with the Wi-Fi Alliance and getting their data elements parameters into TR181. And as such, they are now used as part of the Wi-Fi Alliance's certification process by you know, doing that over USP. This is what USB looks like when it's deployed. So you can see over here on the left that there are many different use cases for controllers and for other components of a USB system, like a data collector, right? So the data collector uses the bulk data collection definitions that are in TR369. And there's kind of a lot to that. And we'll go into that in some other videos. And that, and then you also see sort of the existing use case with a controller that acts as an ACS. You could have a mobile user that is, has a controller on a computing device. And as you can see, that person could be local or on the go. And then specifically also controllers that are uh, done by a third party MSP vendor or application provider. And that allows them to manipulate all of the things you see on the right. And that's done through a couple that this whole thing is done through a couple specific technology choices, right? So improvements over tier 69 is that USP has persistent connections. So there's no need to uh, sort of bring up the, the communication channel every single time. Um, controllers and agents have clear trust uh, relationship with each other. There's that possibility for end-to-end -end application layer TLS and uh, role-based access control to the service elements. And what that means is that the, a controller only can access those things that it has permission to do so. And that's very nice because you can assign different roles to different controllers and have them be responsible for different things. And that really is what empowers the entire USP concept. And then we also have several different kinds of transport protocols. We say message transport protocols to fit different use cases. And I'll go over the, some of those in a second. And then obviously the list of capabilities exposed by tier 181 is, is not, <laughs> is not, uh, all defined right here in this short amount of bullet points, but there are many, many different things that you can manage and represent using TR181. And then more recently, capabilities that can easily be added modularly as containerized services. And that process can be entirely managed by USP and also the modularity of the features themselves can be handled by our new internal services architecture. The structure of TR369, which defines USP 1.3, right? So in that document, uh, which you can, you can find at USP.technology, 
you, uh, there is a definition of how endpoints are addressed and how the objects and parameters in TR181 are addressed when you're communicating. Um, there's an entire section for how agents and controllers discover each other. There's different sections for each of our different message transports and how those work and how those are bound to USP. We define how the USP records work and the end -to -end, the possibility of end-to-end -end sessions, the messages themselves, and how controllers and agents are able to authenticate and authorize each other. And then there's a bunch of different sections in 369 for specific use cases, sort of theory of operations. And that includes the bulk data collection that I was talking about before, the, how to do firmware management, how to do the software module management, which is, I have this as the last bullet here, but it's related to modularizing containers in on that are represented by the agent, and how to proxy devices and proxy different message transfer protocols, and then a full definition of how the IoT capabilities that are defined in TR181 are expected to work with USP. And this is how the the underlying technology looks, right? So on the left, you have the internal architecture, right? You have see a controller with that optional REST API, all of the things that a controller might have, and then multiple controllers working together. You have the optional, the, the out of band data collector on the left hand side that might be doing different protocols. That is all set up via USB, but then communicated to the data collector. And we go into that in a couple of things uh, later. And then you see the coexistence with tier 69 ACS there, how it sort of fits into the tier 101 data model. And then I broke out here specifically this concept of internal services where there is a USP broker, which is kind of a controller communicating with the internal agent and a USP service. And those things are communicating over a Unix domain socket internal to the underlying system. And then on the right, you see the protocol stack, and these are the basic messages that are defined in USP, add, set, delete, get, get supported data model, which is very powerful and uh, a, a good way to be able to actually learn the capabilities of the devices, which we didn't really have in TR69. Uh, get instances, operate, notify, and this new message register, which is introduced in USP 1.3, and that works with those USP services. Then everything is encoded. Uh, in a USB message, which is using protocol buffers. That's then wrapped in a USB record, which is also defined in protocol buffers. You, you have the option at that point of using an end-to-end -end session context with TLS at that layer. So if you happen to be going through one of these brokered MTPs like MQTT or Stomp, and you want to make sure that everything is secured from end-to-end, -end, you can use that session context, or you can just rely on TLS on the MTP. All right, so just a couple of things to note on where to look for more information. USP.technology has everything you need to know about TR369 and USP, including links to the data models and the test plans and those other documents that all work together. The open source OBUSP agent can be found on GitHub at that link. We have a training series that is much more in-depth. It took, there's probably about 10 one-hour sessions that we did a few years ago that are maybe a, a need a little bit of updating, but the, the basics are still there. It was done with a previous version of USP as the topic, but you can find them all there. And then if you want to know how to get your device USP certified, you can find it at that link right there.